college kids with no stove, listen up, because today we're making scrambled eggs in a microwave. Surprised? I was too, when one of my readers, known as Boo Betty Big, asked me if my scrambled eggs microwave. I said, no way. Microwaves don't cook food evenly, and I was sure that some of the egg would overcook. Besides, I was wondering why would you want to use a microwave for something that can be done on the stovetop so quickly? Boo Betty Big patiently explained that the reason you would want to microwave scrambled eggs is to avoid washing the skillet and spatula. Out of curiosity, I had to give it a shot. Here's my somewhat unusual scrambled eggs mixture from the previous video. The two magic ingredients here are milk and flour. It wasn't until I started researching custards that my mom's method made perfect sense. The addition of milk produces a custard-like mixture, and the addition of flour allows you to cook it quickly over high heat because it slows down egg coagulation. Flour or cornstarch is what prevents pastry cream from curdling even when brought to a boil. Add a bit to scrambled eggs and there is no need for low heat. Mix until absolutely no lumps remain, then add your eggs. If breaking eggs is not your forte, break them into a separate bowl first to make sure you don't get any shell in there. Some salt, freshly ground black pepper, and beat this mixture until completely smooth. About salt, I like to use 1.2 grams of salt. For diamond crystal kosher salt, that's a slightly heaping quarter teaspoon. If you're using any other brand or type of salt, including Morton's kosher, the volume measurement will be tremendously different, so either weigh your salt or use the nutrition info on the side of the box to figure out what 1.2 grams of your salt would be in teaspoons. Or experiment and figure out how much salt you like to use. Keep beating until no globs of white are hanging off your whisk when you lift. Don't worry, you can't overbeat these eggs. I like to add a couple of teaspoons of fresh chives, but that's optional. Let's see what happens if we microwave it. After the first 45 seconds, the eggs started to heat up, but not coagulate yet. Let's start to even out their temperature. After another 30 seconds, I've got some coagulation around the sides. Let's stir again. 30 more seconds, and they still look about the same. Coagulation on top, but overall they're pretty liquid. 30 more seconds, and they're getting significantly thicker. I think we're getting close. 20 more seconds, and we're done. Keep in mind that they continue to cook a bit even after you stop microwaving them, so you want to take that residual heat into account. They are so creamy. They don't even need the butter I usually put into them. Look at how delicate they are. They quiver. If only I knew how to make these eggs when I was in college, this would have been so much nicer than instant ramen. Thanks, Boo Betty Big! For more surprising cooking techniques, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.